All right, how's it going, guys? So today, Alexander Bromley put out a video called Six Reasons Strength is Always a Priority and that the Hypertrophy Crew Should Listen Up. And I think the arguments he presented in this video are flawed for a variety of reasons. First, I think the audience is very poorly defined. It actively neglects the training advice of people who are the best examples of hypertrophy enthusiasts or content creators. And it assumes that the strength athlete has the best and ultimate understanding of strength. In this video, I will make the argument that his advice is, if not dogmatic, very parochial. I do not think there is nearly as much disagreement as he claims there to be. However, in the spots where there are disagreement, it is due to his choosing of his own conceptual analysis of what strength is as being superior that really gets his argument in trouble. When the conceptual analysis of strength done by good examples of her training is, is put out, I think that their justification for what strength is is just as valid if not more, given that their application of strength or their understanding of strength is far more relevant and specific to people who are more bodybuilding minded. One thing I find incredibly problematic is that he kind of just groups everyone who has a hypertrophy goals as just one big single faction, that they're just hypertrophy guys or physique guys or bodybuilders or something of that nature, as if they were all unanimously united in one way. Simply grouping together a wide and varied audience by a single factor or feature is, in my opinion, incredibly lazy. It fixates on the poorest example and extrapolates those issues to the larger group. And I think that it is unfair to assume that the lifters who listen to people like Natural Hypertrophy, Jeffrey Brady Schofield, Bob, Bald Omni Man, Faz Lifts, Basement Bodybuilding, Steve Shaw, Hersoviak, are of the same caliber who have broccoli haircuts, benching groups of six, and only listen to people like Greg Doucette or, or Ryan Humiston. I think that when it comes to anyone who has the hypertrophy goal, how they go about it, the methods that they're exposed to, and the, the ideas that they're exposed to alter widely, uh, or very widely. And I think that when we look at the people who are doing it right versus the people who are doing it wrong, that distance and that gap is so wide that saying that they are of the same mindset is incredibly disingenuous. Another thing that he goes on to say, and this is his first point, is that even if you do not care about strength, it is still a very important factor to maximize growth. And like I mentioned, I think the amount of disagreement with that point is very minimal. The disagreement that does arrive from this is what is meant by the word strength. Now, when we have people who just say strength is strength, it's like, all right, cool, very helpful, my guy. But we have to be very clear because when we claim that strength is purely or only progressive overload, that completely eliminates the need to discuss this manner further because that is not something that people who are properly pursuing bodybuilding or properly pursuing strength are arguing about. No one who is in their right mind should argue against progressive overload. But when we look at the discussion that does happen online, we can find statements like, I got bigger and weaker, and these ideas can circulate, be understood, and be relatable because of how strength-focused lifters have hijacked the definition of strength to mean either strength in specific rep ranges or strength with specific exercises then we are no longer talking about only progressive overload and as a result disagreement can happen something that might be a bit of a rebuttal right is that um strength doesn't need to happen with a barbell but when that is the case that brings up to question what are we actually arguing over what are we in disagreement with then it becomes a focus on that other implied definition that strength somehow has to do with certain exercises or rep ranges and alexander bromley goes on to say that focusing on pushing more weights or more reps activates more muscle fibers and this is not something that is unique to strength athletes and bodybuilders are doing the same thing so because someone identifies as a hypertrophy enthusiast or a bodybuilder they are not turning their back on strength it is just that when we add to the definition of strength to mean all of these things that are irrelevant to them that there now is an issue but when it is focused on progressive overload there is no disagreement the concern that is often cited by 
bodybuilders or hypertrophy enthusiasts is that the pursuit of numbers at the expense of rep quality is something that ruins the muscle building process and many strength oriented lifters would have the intuition that rep quality should be maintained no matter what and that this is a moot point but think about it from the other perspective bodybuilders think the exact same way when people try to tell them that they don't care about strength they don't care about strength with specific lifts or in specific rep ranges but they know damn well that they need to be getting stronger and when the strength-focused lifter comes along and says that their understanding of strength is wrong and that we are somehow more enlightened, that our pursuit is more grounded in logic and reason and that theirs is not, I think that we are unnecessarily, because I'm more of a strength enthusiast guy myself, I'm more of a strength-focused lifter myself, that we are just unnecessarily putting ourselves on a pedestal and assuming that strength athletes know more about strength. And that is true only when we characterize strength specifically to our goals for someone who is more of a power lifter they need to execute single repetitions in the squat bench and deadlift when strength the understanding of it the conceptual analysis of strength is more closely related to that yes a power lifter has a better understanding however when we are looking at how strength relates to bodybuilding the bodybuilder has a superior understanding and simply saying that because the power lifter is a power lifter that they are somehow in a better epistemic position is incredibly problematic for many logical reasons because the issue here is the failure to be clear in what we're actually defining and our intuitions are no longer matching up on strength now we like to think that everything in life is somehow this clear-cut definition where everything just kind of fits in this box where we have clear and concise necessary and jointly sufficient reasons or attributes that instantiate the concept of our ideas but that is not always a case when we think about things we don't think that a bird is you know this type of genetic structure or um, something of that nature we don't think uh, of it that way at all when we we tend to look at things through relatable clusters of attributes so for example we would be very quick to identify a sparrow or a pigeon as a bird but it might take us a while for something like an ostrich or a penguin it's because we might say like oh this thing has wings and this thing flies all right cool that thing is probably a bird it has a beak and and whatnot right but then we look at this other example and it's just like it doesn't fly it's it looks much different it looks very weird the wings don't flap nearly as much there's not nearly as much feathers but then you're like wait but that's still a bird so as a result, when we look at strength, the power lifter, what they're looking for as far as strength, and the bodybuilder, what they're looking at as far as strength, either way, they're still looking at what strength is, but the actual features that add up to their conclusion aren't exactly the same. I may have lost you there. I explained that very poorly, but I hope you can kind of understand what I mean. We look at typical factors and not so much things that are jointly and necessary, necessarily sufficient, right? So, for example, if strength is A plus B plus C, but we find an example of strength that is A plus B plus D, to claim that one is superior is either dogmatic or parochial. And both of these are unacceptable reactions. If it is dogmatic, it is because we think that there is disagreement in what we're talking about and that there but when we look at that disagreement there is no justification for treating one's own definition as superior we are not talking about the same thing but your concept is wrong and mine is right that is what a dogmatic person thinks however if we look at a more of a parochial uh, view of things maybe we come to the conclusion that we're actually not disagreeing that we're just talking about two very different things but because i'm the strength athlete because i'm the power lifter my definition of strength is superior and I'm right, you're wrong, and I think that's what's kind of happening here. The bodybuilder's understanding of strength, the way they apply strength, the way they conceptualize strength and apply it to their training is different from our own because their goal is different. But I don't think that makes it inferior. If anything, it should actually make it superior to the person who has hypertrophy goals. So... I think it is wrong to say that someone who has hypertrophy goals or is a hypertrophy guy is turning their nose on something because it doesn't match their identity. That's not the case at all. They are only using that which is most relevant to their overall goal. 
Now, his second point is that low reps and high reps seem to build just as much muscle. And something that I want to point out is that this talking point does nothing to tell you about how to structure your own training. And Alexander Bromley does point this out. Studies that say 3 to 30 or 5 to 30 um, reps are just as efficacious for building muscle should be taken with a grain of salt. However, he also has another problematic statement or premise that strength can only be built in low reps. And that is true when you think about low rep strength. Low rep strength can only be built with low reps. The most specific thing you can do for maximum singles is heavy singles. It's quite simply the principle of specificity. And this is an example of where strength is starting to take on two meanings in his argument. Are we talking about only progressive overload? Because those are strength training features, as he calls them, or something of that nature, right? But he doesn't... From that, we it seems like he doesn't think that that is strength itself. And as a result, strength must be something else. But I'm not really seeing how... Um, you can come to that conclusion in good faith. So bodybuilders, they acknowledge the need for progressive overload, but the feature that is problematic is whether or not strength must be specific to a rep range or to certain exercises. Getting stronger should not be limited to either of those things. What is the, what is the improving the ability to do more reps, more sets, more weight with better form on tricep extensions in the eight to 15 rep range, if not getting stronger? He talks about double progression and dynamic double progression. Those are objectively good ways of getting objectively stronger. But when he goes on in his argument, talking about other factors, it seems that his definition of strength is now adding on to these secondary or other features that weren't part of that initial argumentation. And that's where I take issue. Another point that is worth noting is that Alexander Bromley does know that volume is the name of the game for hypertrophy, but volume has two variables, sets and reps. You can't bind that to a specific rep range as if trying to improve your 10 rep max to a 15 rep max is any less efficacious than trying to improve your 5 rep max to a 10 rep max. In either situation, you're getting stronger. To say that one is superior than another just because it's in a lower rep range is incredibly arbitrary and has more of a powerlifting mindset to it. And this has been actively argued against by bodybuilders and typically that's why their training tends to differ widely. Another thing I want to talk about here is that time and recoverability alter the prescription of the 3 or 5 to the 30 rep range. Volume is no longer equated when done in practical applications. A lot of things definitely work, right? Low reps work, high reps work, but typically the thing that's going to work best for you is just going to be what you have not done in quite a while. So he's kind of getting to the idea of like phase potentiation. And... Something that I want to point out here is that typically when it comes to these rep ranges, I think there is something to be said that the reason why the rep range is so varied is likely to make allowance for outliers, people who respond highly to lower reps and people who respond very well to high reps. I think most people will respond to a mix of both, and but also most people respond well, at least hypertrophy-wise, staying in a more moderate rep range like the 5 to 15 or 8 to 15. And even if we assume that the reps themselves are comparable in, in building mass, I don't think that means we're entitled to assume that the total amount of work that you can do, given the rep range you choose, is comparable. You can definitely do more work with different exercises, um, with different rep ranges, than if you just try to do everything with the heaviest variation possible. And... Going back to the point of phase potentiation, the ability to, like, let's say, so to kind of make it simple, phase potentiation is the thought process that if you do time spent with high reps, that improves your ability to do low reps, and then you take that more and more. So your 10s make you better at 8s, your 8s makes you better at 5s, and your 5s makes you better at 3s and 1s, right? So on and so forth. The portion here is that because there is a nervous component to strength there's a skill component to strength there's a skill to doing more reps there's a skill to doing more singles these are things that can kind of artificially make progress seem like it is occurring but the key thing here is 
the goal itself and not necessarily what you're writing down on your paper. It's like, yes, you might be making progress on paper, but in what direction are you going? Is this relevant to your goal? And if it's not, then it's not a viable metric for you in that moment, or at least as it currently stands. And when it comes to the use of high reps and low reps, this is not something that is unique to strength guys and is routinely done by bodybuilders. So I think that when it comes to the point of low reps and high reps working, it's like, yes, that is true. So as a result, why should we assume that bodybuilders are wrong for trying to get better at doing high reps? Now, going on to his next point, strength is easier to track and more immediately rewarding. I don't think expediency in terms of what is more rewarding is an actual metric in terms of how effective something is. Um, because when strength is defined as progressive overload and or when strength is progress is defined as progressive overload that improvement in strength is essentially disqualified if there's a certain amount of technical degradation beyond an acceptable degree so if your form breaks down and it no longer looks like a bench press you're not doing a bench press and to say that you hit a new pr with that bastardized form you didn't hit a damn pr but when you focus purely on strength in a impatient and immature way where you're only focused on numbers that's where you get the critique of most bodybuilders that a purely numbers based approach can sometimes take you away from more qualitative um, points of data how's your form like are you maintaining proper rest times are you actually keeping tension in the muscles you want to want to target these are things that actually matter to a bodybuilder because the numbers are secondary to that the numbers are only valid if those things are being adhered to and he goes on to have another point about more so dis, um, like body dysmorphia and that if you have objective measurements, that these are going to be the most useful bulwark against your subjective insecurities. However, the most relevant objective measurements for a bodybuilder is not only strength. It is definitely one of them and it should be one of them however muscle measurements body fat assessments and progress pictures are also clear and objective quantitative and somewhat qualitative data that will be a way to kind of combat dis uh, like body dysmorphia and simply allocating it to strength is a way to invite a lot of weirdness or rooms for error so if you are messing up your bulk you're gaining weight too quickly you shouldn't stay the course just because your bench went up. Sure, the numbers are indicative of progress, but if your goal is to have a lean bulk, you are breaking that goal by simply rationalizing that, well, I'm at least getting stronger on my bench. Strength specific traits being different from strength itself seems to be a little bit of a semantic workaround to justify the strength athletes conceptual analysis of a strength to be superior than the bodybuilders when in reality they're just different and but they are still being calibrated by the same nugget of truth of what strength is you can't like i'm not saying you can't call a spade a spade like strength is strength but the thing that we use to recognize that strength is strength will be different depending on the goal so when powerlifters, strength athletes are trying to make the argument that bodybuilders have this incomplete knowledge, they're really just saying that bodybuilders aren't taking their understanding of strength far enough. They're not taking it to the point where they're doing heavy triples and singles. They're not taking it to the point where they're making sure that they're using these certain exercises that are most conducive to strength. And to turn away from those features as bodybuilders choose to do the rep ranges the exercise selection and things of that nature that is not to turn completely away from strength they are still partaking in what is most necessary and another thing that is important for either camp whether you are more strength focused or more size focused is that improvement in form is another important variable for actually getting bigger tape don't lie if you record yourself you'll find errors that you can get better at now, the next point is going to be more so about power bodybuilding or power building. And I'm going to be straight up with you and, and say that power building is unnecessary for most people. And it only further creates confusion because you have to think that, oh, I need to mix size and strength as if they are not already intrinsically linked. This style of training was once just called bodybuilding out of necessity. The amount of equipment that they had is very different from the amount of equipment we have today. 
and also the sport was relatively young as far as it being formalized as far as like a lot of different people being able to put to paper or put to word the methods that they've used to maximize progress and we have seen just how far the overlap between size and strength can take a person you can get incredibly big and strong with big basic compound movements with high rep with high rep ranges low rep ranges things of that nature the overlap and the ability to succeed within that overlap is huge however we have also seen the limitations of relying solely on that overlap and many people in either discipline powerlifting or strength training and bodybuilding or hypertrophy to have then essentially traveled beyond the fog and even powerlifting the training that they have used now is different because it has evolved past its shared route and has learned about how much further it could go if it doesn't stay within its, the overlap between size and strength. One key point I want to make here, though, is that as a result of this, size and strength didn't pull apart. The overlap remained the same and might actually have gotten bigger, but so have the ends, the extreme ends of size the pursuit of size and the pursuit of strength have expanded but the overlap has overwhelmingly stayed the same and that's a good thing as a result it is more than acceptable to say that someone who is, who wants to get bigger should focus on strength but that's almost a given and it is only the work and words of charlatan who of charlatans who try to pull you away from that but just as much it is an oversimplification to say that strength is specifically on this side and that if it doesn't orient itself in that direction, it is no longer strength. And I think that is incredibly a wrong reaction to have. Now, let's talk about his other point of longevity. And this is where I find it incredibly interesting. So he makes the point that for longevity purposes, strength training is going to be superior. And because of the bone density benefits, certain functional benefits and things of that nature. But one thing I will say is that bodybuilding is far more easier to maintain um, than let's say strength training or powerlifting style training the body de deteriorating as far as like health and whatnot is not due to the style of training that you do but more so the lack thereof the inability to manage training variables would also further the degradation because if you get injured lifting heavier than you need to or more volumes than you need to then you, that takes you away from the gym and as a result that degradative process happens faster or more and i think one great example of this is faz lifts he is more so uh, engaging with bodybuilding into his wiser years and for good reason he is still getting all the same benefits that traditional strength training can provide because strength training is not specific to certain exercises he might not be doing the barbell lifts anymore however i don't think that as a result of that his bones are in a weaker position because he's still sub subjecting his body to high levels of stress that maintain his muscles and as far as trying to appeal to certain psychological aspects, I think this is very, I guess, this assumes that people have the same mindset or are of one mindset and that there is a specific mindset that is intrinsically better than another. Once again, that is either very dogmatic or very parochial. And that kind of brings us into the final point, status. And this is something that I think has it's going to be me venturing out into like what i think is the issue here and for the most part i think that when it comes to something like status he says that you can say it doesn't have an effect on you but you are lying and i think part of that is because he exists as a content creator i have talked to too many people in the who have purely hypertrophy goals and i know just how genuine they are when they say they do not care about strength but when they say that, they're talking about specific lifts and specific rep ranges, 1RMs, things of that nature, because that's what they are told strength is. But when you look at their programs, they are regularly getting stronger. They are constantly chasing for progression. They are just making sure that there are other things that are in place before they actually add weight to the bar as a necessity rather than uh, as a necessity to continue growing rather than a necessity to continually getting stronger. They are different. And there, Alexander Bromley makes the points about networking and authority. And as I mentioned, not everyone is a content creator, but every person has to live with what they make of themselves. And I don't think it is healthy to 
kind of calibrate your own self-image purely off of the expectations and reactions of other people. Gen generally speaking, the people who have the strongest amount uh, or the strongest, healthiest self-image are people who are not deluded and are able to listen to what other people have to say about them, but are more so able to have a genuine relationship with their own goals and reality itself. Ex excluding or not because of what other people say they should be so what do i mean by that look at guys like gvs and nh i've heard them on several occasions say that they could bench more if they wanted to but that doesn't really matter to their goal so when people ask them uh how much do you bench or things of that nature it doesn't really matter to them and don't get me wrong like there was something in the video talking about how he definitely feels that his authority as a YouTube fitness influencer or content creator is definitely up in the air whenever he puts on a couple more pounds and he's definitely given a lot more respect when he's a bit leaner. Like, sure, that's the name of the game and I totally understand that, me being one of the bigger fellas on the platform. However, I think projecting that... I think he is projecting when he says that um that should be a reason why you should train a specific kind of way as if you should be bullied or um what's the word <laughs> i don't know some type of hazing that your goal isn't good enough because it doesn't also simultaneously have strength goals along with it i think being proud of your own goals and being in touch uh, with reality with your own goals is far more superior than meeting the requirements of other people if you are a bodybuilder, if you are a hypertrophy guy, you should be focused on just getting bigger. Not because of what I expect of you, but because that's what your goal demands of you. You can't claim to be hypertrophy focused or a bodybuilder if you are unable to look at your program and see improvement. Not if I can do that for you. It doesn't matter what I see. It's matter that you see that because then you can correct it and you can act upon it. So if your ultimate goal is size, Strength is just a feature, not necessarily a priority. It should always be present, but it is not the ultimate goal. It is serving the purpose of your ultimate goal. And it being a feature is highly different than it being a priority. Because when he says priority, I think he means it in a way that it should be a goal included in your training. And... I think he means more of an ultimate goal. It should be something that you allocate a lot of your time, effort, thought, and attention to, when in reality, your focus should be on what matters most to you. I want you to understand the key thing that I want you to take away from this video is that whenever someone is trying to present to you this argument for why you should train for strength for size, is that be very cognizant of how they're using the terms. Are these talking only about progressive overload or do they mean something more for lack of better words nefarious do they mean certain exercises do they mean certain rep ranges do they mean like some like like do they mean that your strength training should look what they approve of if that is the case i think that there's something wrong happening and rather than that you should be focusing on more of those strength related features as he called them or things of that nature that are still definitely strength but are far more relevant to your goals if you want to get bigger listen to bodybuilders they have a better understanding of how to use strength for that goal and if you want to get stronger and see how when i say it that way it has that connotation that um added um assumption that i'm talking more so about certain exercises or a certain rep range singles doubles triples fives things of that nature then listen to someone who has more experience in that realm because they might be talking about the same thing but the way they identify it not the way they identify themselves the way they identify what they're talking about is different so i may have lost you i may have not made any amount of sense i may have been rambling for the past 30 minutes but i think that we should be incredibly careful in how we define our terms and make sure that when we talk about them, we talk about them with very clear con uh, context to make sure that the definition is consistent throughout our entire, entire discussion so that we can realize 
that when bodybuilders say strength and when powerlifters or strength athletes say strength, they are talking about the same thing, but not for the same reasons. I can probably make a whole other long rant and rambling about that, but I will leave it there for today. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.